Hey, welcome back to another Harmonious at Lunch. We have an interesting episode for sure teed up for today. We're going to diagnose the harmonious architecture as it applies to business and life. Like I said, a unique episode. I want to welcome in Jill Schultz. Jill, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Brandon. I'm honored. Thank you so much. Yeah, I am super excited to have you here. Now, today's episode, we're going to dive into a little bit of a taboo topic, but it's something that needs to be out there. And Jill has a powerful, inspiring message that I personally believe that leaders need to hear so they can guide their teams and their organizations effectively. Um, but Jill, I, I know you do want to offer a little bit of a warning to the audience. So if you would just start us off with that. Yeah, thank you. So this is, like you said, a taboo topic. People are not having this conversation and we get to normalize it. It gets to be something that we get to talk about because shame can't live in the light. We are as sick as our secrets and holding on to whatever secret you have stops you from having the most amazing life. So if anything that I say today triggers you, please go to the resource section on my website, jilleschultz.com. There's resources and there are anonymous organizations that you can reach out to to get help. But it's really important to me that you are protected today. Yeah, no, that's that's very important. Uh, put the website there on the screen. Go to the resource section. Um, if you're watching this live, if you're dropping or if you're watching the replay, drop it in the comments. If you have any questions, concerns, ahas, we want to hear it. Jill wants to hear it um, and she can find you the resources necessary for you. So let's dive right in. You are, as of 13 days ago, a published author. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this book and about yeah. the message you have to share with us? Yeah, the book's called Liberated, Releasing the Dark Cloud of Shame. And it's really because my story has kept me in so much shame for 41 years. And it's, you know, my purpose and mission to help people get out from under that shame. And I'm going to just dive into it because that's Please. all we get to do. Um, so I was molested when I was around three or four years old. And it's I'm so grateful for the Me Too movement because I feel like now people have a space to really talk about sexual trauma if they've been hurt by somebody. But where my story is different is I was the little girl who innocently and curiously experimented with other children because of what somebody taught me to do. And I lived with shame for 41 years because I thought I was the only little girl who ever did anything like that. I thought I was a pedophile. I thought I was a monster. I was acting out in between seven and 12. And can you imagine a 12 year old thinking of themselves like that? It's just Terrible. so the thing that I get to do now is, you know, I and what I want to inspire people to do is if you have a story like this, you get to share it. You get to get it out because life on the other side of healing is so beautiful and so magical. And you just get to create your life from a, a, this blank canvas of a space. And so that's just a little bit about me. I know that's in your face and shocking, but, um, you know, we get to normalize this conversation. We do. And, you know, I, I've only known you now for about 10 minutes. So I, I don't know the Jill before this book came out and before you released this shame, but I know from seeing you here that you are radiant, you are excited, you're vibrant. I mean, tell me, what was that? What was the process? Like, how long did it take you to kind of get through this and get to where you are today? Yeah, it took a long ass time. Sorry, I swear. Sometimes. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I started going to, I'm 55 right now. And it took until I was 51 years old for me to finally release all of this. And so I want to tell people my story so that they can see that they're not alone and they can get past this. So how it showed up for me in my life was relationships with men. Um, I never wanted a man to see me because I thought, how can a man love me if he knew what I had done? And now I'm like, how can a man not love me knowing how amazing I am? So I'm looking, wink, wink. Um, I'm calling in my person right now. Um, Put and it in the comments, if you're the person, let's see. If you're my person, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, it really affected me in business, which is why I'm glad that you and I are talking about this, because I know that this is obviously mostly based around business. And, you know, I had imposter syndrome. I just I never felt like I was smart enough. I, I was in an organization called EO, and I'm sure a lot of your people in this group know that organization. 
I was in their accelerator program trying to get my company to a million dollars. And oftentimes I'd be sitting in that room thinking I was the dumbest person there. I'm like, how these people are so brilliant, you know, but I didn't have the deserve level because I was holding on to all this shame and my secret. And so if you have any kind of secret, you get to let it go because it's holding you back from your true magnificent self. Yeah. That's such a great message too, because I don't, I don't think limiting yourself is a smart idea. So whatever it is holding you back, but a lot of times we don't know exactly what that is in your case, you very clearly did, but I'm curious from, from the leader perspective, right? So how do I notice something like this show up in my employees, my team member, are there telltale signs to look for in someone else? Oh, that's really hard. Cause I can't tell you, I've had at least three or four people say to me now that they know my story. Mm-hmm. How could they not have known? Like, this is such a shameful topic. People learn to hide it really, really well. And so I don't know that there's going to be anything that's going to show up in your employees that you're going to be like, Oh, you know, uh, there are certain ways that people act out. Certainly drug and alcohol abuse been there. Um, you know, uh, sexual promiscuity, self-harming, um, eating disorders. So if you see any of those types of activities going on with your employees, then it's something to be concerned about for sure. But people are really good at hiding their shame. Yeah. And that's, again, it's unfortunate that we are in a culture that normalizes and even promotes that, that you you can't talk about it. Um, So let's flip that question around then for you listening. Um, you know, for you, Jill, what was it that really motivated you to take the first step to take action and, and fix it, or at least try to fix it? Because I think it doesn't have to be as serious as your story, but it could right. be as simple as, you know, I'm, I'm embarrassed that I eat three Twinkies a day or, or something like that. What is it that needs to happen to take that first step? Well, first you have to acknowledge that there's a problem, like there's an issue that needs to be dealt with. Right. And then uh, you use the Twinkie example, uh, Twinkie example, because so you kind of threw me off a little bit. I'm like, um, just knowing that 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 your self confidence and your self love are not there are going to be indications that you need to to find some help in whatever what ever area that might be in your life, because those were the main things that were holding me back. As I had self loathing, and um, you know, to 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 think about saying in the mirror, Oh my God, I love you was foreign to me. Now I say it all the time, you know, but uh, those are, those are just a couple of things that I would say to be like, if you have something, and I love that you said earlier, you may not even know what it is that's holding you back. And there's a, there's a worksheet on my website called uncover your shame. And one of the questions that I love the most on there, and I don't know if your community, if you guys believe in God or not, or source or, you know, universe or whatever your beliefs are, I believe in God. Um, the, the question on there is what is one thing only you and God know? Wow. Wow. That's a question. Is that a mic drop question? So if you're trying to figure out what you're ashamed of, that's a great question to contemplate. Wow. I don't know how I follow that question. <laughs> that's a, wow. That's powerful. Yeah. Um, I encourage all of you watching to go take the assessment or at least just ask yourself that question. Cause that, that is a doozy. I don't find questions that stump me all that often. Um, I love it. That's, that's really great. So then tell me on the other side of this experience for you, um, what are, what are the results? Like, what are you seeing in your life happen now from, obviously this is a business you're speaking, you have a book, you're, you're going places. What are the positive results of just addressing this, tackling it and deciding to move forward with your life? Well, what did you say that I was radiant? Did you, is that I what you said? Radiant. Yes. I mean, I, I cannot tell you, I am joyful every day. Like I wake up and I am so grateful and joyful and excited and really just like, what do I get to do now? Like, who do I get to help? And before there was always this looming shame cloud that I have following me around everywhere. I'd wake up. It was there. I'd go to sleep. It was there. You know, always that pit in your stomach of just like, uh, there's something that I need to deal with. And my favorite saying is life happens outside your comfort zone. It's a version of Neil uh, Donald Walsh's um, saying, and that's so true. Like, look at whatever is 
hard, like whatever keeps talking to you, whatever keeps showing up in your, in your mind and you get to look at it and you get to face it head on and say, you do not own me anymore because life on the other side is like I said, it's beautiful. Like I, I, I'm just in so much gratitude every day. And now I get to look at my trauma as a gift, you know, and I know that I get to help people. So it's really a special place to be if you can take that first step and look at whatever it is that's holding you back and see how you can get help around that. So important. Yeah. That, again, just acknowledging it, there's, there's power in that because then you can look for a solution. You can look for a mentor, somebody to ask. There's you can always an answer. have Jill's book. There's yeah. always an answer. Uh, tell me what's your, what's your mission? You're bringing this, this message to the world. What is your mission? Who are you trying to help with, with this book? I think this book can help anybody because everybody has a secret. Everybody has a secret, mm -hmm. you know? So um, right now my goal and my purpose is just to get on stages and shout my message from the rooftop to normalize this conversation, to let people know they're not alone because I thought I was alone for 41 years. Yeah. That's, that's such a powerful message. Well, I, I wish you nothing but the best with this message. Um, and the book, of course, how, how have book sales been so far? I'm curious. It's only, we're only two weeks into this, but I'm excited. I know. For yes. I'm in the top 100 in like five different categories on Amazon. Yeah. So it's really, really exciting. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm very pleased. Very pleased. That is so awesome. Well, Jill, I want to thank you for coming. Um, I'll, I'll, we'll wrap up in a minute with where people can find you, but first I want to tie this to the harmonious business architecture. So every time we have one of these episodes, I go in blind. Truth be told, this is a live episode. Like I said, I met Jill three minutes before we went live on this. And it's always a challenge for myself and my business partner, Sean, who you've met. We go live every Wednesday on our show to tie things to this architecture. We have yet to find a way to break it and we want to, but we can't. In this episode, I guarantee you, we touched on inspire. We touched on leadership because if you don't know yourself as a leader, you can't lead a team effectively. You can't lead anyone. You can't even lead yourself effectively. The other thing we touched on, which is very, very present with Jill, is the navigation portion of your business. And that is your mission and your vision and your core values. It's clear that Jill is on a mission, uh, especially with, with this book, bringing her story to light and serving people who have shame and who are hiding a secret. Um, if you have any of that present, I really encourage you. I'm going to put Jill's website on the screen here. Please go to her website, download that questionnaire, contact her, find the resources. I encourage you to reach out and, and find a solution to anything you're suffering from because it will hold you back. And you can see even Jill's transformation here. It's been uh, incredible just to hear your story. So thank you again, Jill, so much for showing. Is there is there somewhere besides your website where we can go to follow you, follow your book journey on social media, anything like that? Yeah, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I'd love to tell you what those links are. I think it's Jill E. Schultz 11 on Instagram is my handle. But if you go to my website, you can get my links there. I should probably know those by heart, right? <laughs> you, you know what you would think? Yes, but we'll give you a pass. We'll put those in the show notes for the recording. So you'll, have, you. you'll have access to Jill. Um, and Jill, if there's one thing that you want people to do, do from this episode, what would that be? What's their next step after hearing you? Say it out loud one time. Just say mm. it out loud. Get it out one time and then find help to help with your healing for sure. That is amazing. Well, thank you, Jill, again. Thank you for coming. This has been a very, very deep, insightful episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I can't wait to see you on the next one. And go follow Jill, please. This has been awesome. Thank you, Jill. Thanks, Brandon.